Hi, my name is Martin Jovanovic. I'm a drum teacher and in this video I'm going to be analyzing a drum, a live drum video of Behemoth's drummer Inferno who is playing Slaves Shall Surf. Before I start off with this video I want to give a big shout out to the guys at Blastology.net. I know they are not around anymore, the page is not online anymore, but back in the days, like 10 years ago, even more than 10 years ago, um, Blastology.net filmed and released a lot of really interesting drum videos of Inferno, Derek Roddy, George Colias and so on. And these videos were what got me to metal drumming in the first place. So big shout out to them if they see this video. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's start. Yeah, the first thing that's really interesting is the snare angle and also the tom angle. Because his snare his rack toms and also his floor tom are not flat, they're angled. And the reason for that is, you know, he's using the French grip, which, is his, which means his thumbs are facing up. And with a, if you're using a French grip all the time, it's way easier to hit the drums without hitting the rim if your drums are angled that way. So this goes for the snare drum, but especially for the toms. If your toms are totally flat and you're using French grip all the time, it's like really difficult to hit the drum without hitting the rim. But the way his drums are angled, this is way easier. You can also see this with the right symbol. It's like, it's not flat, it's also angled as well. So let's continue. I like the mini china on the left side, 14 or 16 inch. Yeah, that was a nice quad feel. His quad feel now was really really nice played and well performed. You know, I see a lot of young drummers who start using quad fills right away. Quad fill would be right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, because it's like easy to play fast and to get fast when you're using quad fills because you're separating the notes between hands and feet. But actually they are not that easy to perform because the, the notes have to be lined up perfectly um, to make for the quad fills to sound good. If you don't line them up perfectly, they sound like garbage and that what's ha that's what happens most of the time but this quad fill was amazing really tight plating again great quad fill what you can see here as well is when he's playing with the right hand on the snare drum and when he's playing fast with the right hand on the snare drum like with this blast beat variation, um, his hand moves from up here to down here, so when he plays like that his mo hand moves down. Also I've seen a lot of comments of drummers who are critiquing him for not hitting that hard and the thing is, you know, I wouldn't critique him for that because I know he's not getting a big um, swing of his sticks when he's playing, but you know, he's using French grip and but he's not using any fingers at all, it's only the turning motion of the wrist. If he would use a mix of wrist turning motion and fingers, it would be easier to get like a big beta swing like for example Hannes Grossmann, who's playing uh, mostly French grip with his left hand on the snare. Um, he uses a mix of wrist and fingers, he calls it the hybrid technique and this way it's easy to get a big stick motion out of it, but the way he plays it like if you close your fingers totally and play like that, everything just comes from the turning motion of your forearm, which is generated by your biceps, by the way, and you're not going to get this big um, stick motion out of it. Here you can see that He's resting his bass drum beater against the bass drum head. He's also sitting like really on the front part of his drum stool. If you do that, you're gonna tend to lean forward, which is exactly what he does. And this way it's easy to apply constant pressure on your pedals, which results in the bass drum beater resting against the bass drum head. I personally prefer to sit a bit further back because then I'm more balanced, but the way he sits is like this way you tend to lean forward into the drum kit. Okay, 16 note triplet double bass. 
this would be a 16 note triplet double bass the song is at 270 this is like almost like 16th notes at 200 bpm around that tempo until now please <laughs> um, also pay attention to his kick drum he was not missing one note till now there was not one mistake in this performance uh, really well executed <laughs> Also, now you can see his left foot, he's using axis pedals in this video. These are the pedals he used back in the days. And his VDL is almost all the way on the top. He's not using the back position, it's all the way on the top, but to the top, to the front of the pedal. And this way it's also easier to push the bass drum beat against the bass drum head. If the VDL would be all the way back, it would be way harder, almost impossible um, to rest the beat against the bass drum head. Now he took his left foot off the bass drum pedal. The bass drum beater was swinging back and you could clearly see that he's not using a big uh, beater angle. So it's not like 45 degrees or 90 degrees. It's closer to the bass drum head, like around 30 degrees. These are 16th notes at 270 BPM for the first song of the set. <laughs> nice. Also great. Now he's playing um, a five-stroke roll pattern with his feet. And incredibly tight. Please keep in mind this was the first song of their set. So they are starting out with the fastest song of the set as first song of the set, which is really difficult for everyone who ever played live for a metal band. Everyone will tell you that this is really tough. And till now, again, no mistakes at all. Great drumming. really tight. Yeah. Now you can see he's more getting, he's getting into it. He's warmed up now, getting a bit harder. Yeah. One thing that's also really important. I know that he's not hitting that hard, but he's hitting hard enough. You can hear everything. The thing is, when he's playing a blast beat, I understand the volume is not that high, so he's not hitting that hard, but in between when he's playing a fresh beat, um, the great thing is now he would have time to hit really hard, but um, he's able like, to keep the volume at one certain level. If he would hit really hard during the fresh beats and the volume would drop down for the blast beat, his sound guy would have a hard time mixing him, mixing him. but the way he's performing it just sounds fine. That's the reason why this guy sounds so good live. One of the many reasons. Watch how he sits really far to the front of the drum stool, leaning forward all the time. Yeah, great video, great drumming from Inferno. I've seen him many times live because um, he often played with Behemoth right after I played with Belfigor and I watched every show. <laughs> he was like always amazing. Um, regarding his pedal settings, back in the days he used, first he used Axis pedals, Axis A longboards. Just want to tell you about uh, his pedal settings a bit. It was a medium to high spring tension, VDL almost all the way to the front, beta close to the bass drum head. And yeah, perfectly tight and controlled double bass. Um, after that he switched to trick pedals for some time and after that um, he started using the Chachi Copito, the Polish direct drive pedal and he's still using them now. All right, that's it for this short video. Thanks a lot to Inferno for this amazing performance. Thank you for watching my videos. Um, don't forget to leave a like, comment underneath if you want a certain drum video to be next on this channel. Don't forget to copy and paste the YouTube link of the video you want, then it's way easier for me to find it on YouTube. 
That's it for today. Hope you have a great day. Cheers from Vienna. Bye.